Back in 2011, Megablox decided to do something different by creating a large scale battlescape style base plate. The first one came with one Spartan, a Brute, two Grunts and a uniquely coloured mongoose, which was exclusive to this set. It also came with two clear plastic rods, which enabled you to pose the mongoose mid-flight or mid-jump. And the actual base plate itself was slightly versatile, as in one section of the terrain could be placed over a bunker section to create an indoor area or an underground area, or you could swap it over to the other side of the base plate and cover up the exposed corner. The Battlescape 1 was quickly followed by Battlescape 2, which I believe was also released in 2011. This one came in a different colour, once again a uniquely coloured vehicle in the form of a ghost, as well as the two plastic display rods, a Spartan, an Elite and a Marine, which could also be converted into a Marine Flood combat form. The following year we got Battlescape 3 which mixed things up a bit once again in a different colour, but this time instead of the removable terrain piece they gave us a buildable forerunner structure to sit above the bunker instead. It also only came with one figure, but it did come with two Sentinels, one standard and an enforcer. In 2012, they also released the Versus Snowbound Battlescape, part of the Snowbound series. This one was back to the original format of the Battlescape with the add-on or detachable terrain, and it came with an automated Covenant plasma turret build, one Elite and two Spartans, one of which was in active camo, and once again came with the clear plastic display rods. For the longest of time, I had little to no interest in any of these sets due to the fact there's very little building involved with them. And given my main interest in the hobby is the building side of it, it's not something that really appealed to me. That said, I have collected a number of them over the years by default, simply because they've come with used hauls that I've collected. Up until this point, I've just had them packed away in a box. But today, that's all about to change. What you see in front of you is the Battlescape 3, and I didn't buy it new, I got it used, and that's why it's got the wrong figure with it. I knew I had the base plate in my box of base plates, but I had no idea whether I had the parts to actually build the Forerunner structure and the Sentinels. So I spent a bit of time going through all my spare parts collection, and thankfully I managed 100% complete all three of the builds that come with this set. And I have to say, I loved it. It's such a great set. I was so pleasantly surprised about how much satisfaction I got from, well, not only finding all the pieces, but the end result itself. And for me, the star of the show has to be that Enforcer Sentinel. It's such a fun build and it's something that we've never had before and we've never had since. It's the only time we've ever seen an Enforcer Sentinel from Mega. And for a 12 year old build, I think it looks pretty good as does the smaller Sentinel. It's the only one I've got parts for, so I could only create one of these. But again, for 12 years old, I think it looks fantastic. And those blue highlights on the side of it, they're actually prints, not stickers, 12 years ago, putting prints on their sets. That is just incredible. And then finally, the Forerunner structure. Whilst in some regards, it's a very simple build, I think it's incredibly effective and adds a huge amount to the actual overall build experience. So I'm really glad that they included that. The only other thing to note on this set was the color of the actual base plate that's not the green it is a really unusual color. And I realized, I don't know if it's exactly the same, but it's incredibly close to the assault on high ground color. And you don't tend to see that assault on high ground color very often. The assault on high ground is incredibly popular and I think it's got a lot to do with the color. I'm a big fan of that color and I do wish we could see it more often for building structures from. So it's great to see it again here in this battlescape. But as impressed as I was, this set still had more to offer. If you own the Warthog Resistance set, Mega offer instructions online to be able to combine the two sets. You use the parts from the Forerunner structure on the battlescape, as well as the parts from the Forerunner structure on the Warthog Resistance to create a completely different Forerunner structure on the other section of the battlescape. So of course, I had to give it a go. And this, is what it looks like. The alt build itself is definitely more involved than either of the original builds from the Battlescape or the Warthog Resistance. And I think the end result is the better of the three builds. It's a really nice looking build. It's a fun build. And it also screams Forerunner structure. So it's an all round win in that regard. 
it doesn't use all of the pieces from those two builds. But I do, however, think it makes this Battlescape look even better than the Battlescape does with its original structure that it comes with. If there's one negative to building this alternate build is that you lose the original structure from the other side of the Battlescape. And when you pan over to the other side of the Battlescape, you can't help but miss that structure. It just makes that side of the scape feel empty. So me being me, there was only one thing to do back into the parts collection. Let's see if I can find some more parts and rebuild the Battlescape structure so I can have both. And this is how I got on. As you can see, I almost managed to complete the original Forerunner structure from the Battlescape. It's just missing those tips, the slopey bits that come off the top of each of those uprights on the on each build. In fact, I need four of them. I only had two. I'm not bothered in the slightest because just adding back what I have makes a huge difference to the Battlescape as a whole. It really finishes off that corner and definitely puts a huge smile on my face. So I'll 100% be leaving it like this with both builds on there. The only downside is, is that you do really need the parts from both of these builds to be able to complete both of these builds, which would mean you'd need two of these Battlescapes and they go for a lot of money these days. They're just, they're just hard to get full stop. But if you do have two, I'd strongly recommend building both options of this just to fully flesh out the Battlescape. But I'm not done there. I'm never done. This just inspired me to see how far could I take this Battlescape? How much could I add to it just to continue to improve it? All I've got here are the basic set pieces. Obviously, I haven't added in the Warthog resistance yet. There's figures to go in, but... I'm thinking what this really needs is some foliage. So I'm going to break out my tub of foliage and landscape pieces, and I'm going to really, really dress this thing up. I'm going to see just how nice I can make this Battlescape. I'm going to start off by adding some of these rock pieces. I'm sure you guys are familiar with these. They come in two sizes. These are the small ones. You also get the bigger sections, which are the base for the small ones. You can either use them separately or join together, whatever takes your fancy. It's rare that I don't use these in dioramas when I'm creating foliage of some kind. I like to place them first so I can then cluster the foliage around them. And the first foliage piece I like to use are these three pronged leaf pieces. These are great for creating a base for the foliage. You can just stack them on top of each other and because of the shape they are, you can point them in any direction and it creates a really dynamic base layer for the foliage. And also because there's a hole in the stud, it allows you to insert other foliage pieces into them, which you'll see very shortly. These pieces actually come in three different colors. I always tend to gravitate towards this darker green color because I just feel as a base for the foliage, the dark green looks better. It also contrasts quite nicely with the actual color of the landscape of the base plate too. So I start by going around placing these pretty much everywhere I think I'm going to want foliage, which would usually be around all of the rock pieces that I've implemented and just around the edges of the structures and everything where you'd usually expect weeds to start growing up and so on. Next up, I add these much more realistic looking foliage pieces. These don't have a stud on the bottom. They have a small tube instead, which actually fits perfectly down inside those three pronged green leaf pieces, which is why I like using them so much. They go together perfectly. They also diffuse the obviously jagged shapes of those first pieces I put down. Again, these pieces come in two or three different colors, but again, I tend to use the darker green for lower down shrubs. And if I'm going up higher, I'll use the lighter greens. The other benefit of these pieces, they can actually attach to each other as well, which is really, really handy. Next up, I'm gonna add some of these tree trunk pieces. The base trunk comes as one piece and then you can add either Y-shaped arms to create two upper limbs or just one upper limb. I'm just gonna use one upper limb in this case. I'm not gonna add any leaves or foliage pieces to these trees, you can do, but I just want the bare tree by itself. It's gonna add a nice change of color as well as shape to the diorama. And next up, I'm going to be using these small fern pieces. I absolutely love these small fern pieces. They're so realistic looking and they come in a multitude of different colors as well. You can use them on their own or you can just pile them up one on top of each other, depending on how many you've got. I'm also going to be using these brown cones as 
tree trunks for these ferns. That means you don't have to just place them directly onto a stud on the ground. You can have them at any height you want, like miniature palm trees. It definitely adds a bit of variety in both color, shape and size to the diorama. So I'll tend to use quite a few of these and I like them to complement the foliage that we've done so far. Most of the foliage has been relatively low lying foliage. These are designed to protrude out from that foliage to give the diorama and the foliage aspect a bit more height. And final piece of foliage are these giant fern pieces. These have to be my single most favorite foliage piece. They are so realistic looking. I usually put them on at the end. I see where they'd be best suited to. And then once they're on the diorama, I find that my eye is always drawn to them. They're so vibrant and so detailed and they add a huge amount of realism to just about any diorama with vegetation, which is again why I use them in pretty much every diorama I create. And so that's just about it for the vegetation side of it. And as I'm sure you'll agree, it's 10 times better with than it was without. I could have gone further, but sometimes less is more. And I believe that's the case in this scenario. Plus, I wanted to make sure I left enough space for a few figures because it just wouldn't be complete without them. First up, we've got a pack of Forerunner dogs. Yes, I know they're not called that, but I call them that. So there we go. They're just hanging around at this Forerunner structure. I think if you stumbled across this on the game, you'd have these guys spawning left, right and center just to make your life hell. So it seems appropriate to put a few of these around this area. Moving over, you can see I added the Sentinel back in as well as the red Spartan that comes with the set, but it's not the right Spartan. But if it was, it would come with the set. So that's the red Spartan for the set. He's just hanging out on that four on a structure as a defensive position to defend himself from that Sentinel. And then I also added the weapon supply drop pod, if that's what you call it. That came with the Warthog resistance because you've combined the sets. We might as well use as much as we can from those sets. Plus those pods look absolutely cool, especially when they've got a Spartan laser hanging around inside of them. And then finally, I wanted to use the Warthog and the figures from the resistance set as well as the Enforcer. And as you can see, clearly they parked the Warthog in a no park zone. So that Enforcer just came along, picked it up and is taking it off to the pound. So those Spartans are bailing out and they're going to head over to that fortress where they're going to back up that red spartan this also gave me the opportunity to use the clear plastic rods that come with this set the idea of this was to use as much as i possibly could from these two sets and try and keep it authentic to those two sets aside from all the bits i added like foliage and this is what the final result looks like if we take a step back and for a guy that thought these base plates were a waste of time and space I've had an awful lot of fun putting this video together, which is why I made it. And if you guys enjoyed watching it, please do me a favor and hit the like button before you go. And although that's that for this base plate, I do intend to experiment with these base plates further. In the instructions, they do show you that you can connect four of these together or more if you have them. Well, it just so happens I do have four of the brown base plates and four of the white snowbound base plates. So I think I'm going to have a little mess around with those and see what I can come up with. And maybe there'll be another video coming soon. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.